Ah, my goodness. What was your Jehovah Witness friend saying now? Huh? <laughs> he said about Jehovah's Witness. I didn't know whether he would want to come, but he's an artist. And he's in the Dog Day Afternoon movie, which you'll see him. He was the, he was the jailhouse third wife of the guy that Dog Day Afternoon, the film, was based on. He was his jailhouse lawyer, and he got, he got him out, not only got him out of prison, uh, but in, he appears in this documentary called The Dog, which is circulating. And I'm going to show you a picture. Here is a picture of what he looked back in the good So you'll be forewarned. That, that your beauty is fleeting, young man. Look at what happened to him in just how many years, George? How many years ago? How many years ago? How many years ago was that, George? Come on, Dudley. Come on, Dudley. And it's called The Dog. You get it for $9.99. He's a jailhouse lawyer, and he's also a painter. I commissioned him to do a painting, and... Off at the, um, uh, what's it called, the um, um, Lincoln Center, they had a showing by Barbara Resnick, I think is a famous photographer, and he, I commissioned, it took him months to do this, but he did a painting for me that I have home on my wall, and that's a painting of the dog. I, would, I robbed this bank, because when he came out of jail, he made money. First, he applied for a job at her at uh, Chase Manhattan, who would who would rob a bank guarded by the dog? Because once the movie came out, that was his whole identity was the dog. And of course, it took them months to say no. He's on parole. He got his sentence reduced from 20 years to 12 with immediate parole. So then they would go on and pose in front. And we were talking about uh, having an interview with him. And he, actually, John is much more muscular and better looking in this picture. And we said, you know, we're we're trading in on the dog day afternoon myth, like Macho Man Rob's Bank, you know, and uh, and uh, uh, and then he looks, it's so funny here, I told you, you looked angelic, right? And now I said, yeah, he looks real angelic in the painting, you would think he was a choir, a choir boy or something, but I mean, I don't know what happened to those tits, I don't, why did you grab the tit? You grew the tits because you just like him, Matt has two kids, life is strange, darling. And this is his brother, who we have to take care of on weekends. And this was, you know, us at the, that's that viewing. That was the thing I think I showed you. So anyway, so that's the uh, story. Your interview was super, super good, by the way. Oh, thank you. So what it is is I'm gonna have to film it. I have it in high definition. I burned the DVD, which I'll give you a copy of. I think I have one because the only thing else on that DVD is this orgy scene that went on out there, which I wouldn't circulate anywhere. You know, where the guy has a, the, I guess, batter I thought was paint spilled all over him. I didn't know how explicit it was gonna get, but I had my portable light, this thing here. Now in here, you got plenty of good light. Okay, so, that was, that was so I had I had this portable light, and so when it was going on, and you know the colors weren't really showing in that dim light, you know, I turned that up, and that gave lighting to the whole. It really made it much better. My contribution, because you know, like even this on you, does it make you appear even better? When you look up at that beautiful screen, George. You look, you look whiter and whiter. His mother's white, his father's black. He used to get beat up because he was too white in bed style, so he learned to fight, a street fighter. Who would ever think, right? Black boy being beaten up for being too white. Is that the wrong term? African American man beat up, you know, father of two, you know, but a professional bank robber. How did he end up being a professional bank? He's the nicest person in the world. You were laying in bed with a crew. Huh, you what? That's where the money's at. <laughs> That's where the money's at. Yeah, he said you were tired of going home and finding the, uh, uh, seeing all the broken down people on the train that were going nowhere. Where did you work? Everywhere. Yeah, but uh, and then John Woolwich, the bank robber, also had worked in a bank. That's why they decided to rob Chase Manhattan Bank. But he went back and tried again. He ended up going back in jail for another 10 or 15 years. Oh, yeah? Yeah, he's a real jailbird. When did you get out of jail, finally? <laughs> finally. When? When did I go in? No, what time? You went, you, when did you get out? You went in for how many more years? Oh, something like around 10. 10, and you got out what year? 
95. 95. You, you've been a good boy. So you don't have to say anything. You've been a good boy. So when, then you became a Jehovah's Witness. He's taking care of his mother who's 88 years old with Alzheimer's. He's a living saint. He's there. He has to be home tonight at 8. He gets a care worker. And I mean, it's grotesque. I mean, he tells me things like he has to stick his hand into her body to remove the excretion. You know, I mean... I mean, the thing, I mean, and she's 88 years old, he builds special wheelchairs to take her to family reunions in Virginia. He has two sons. Where are you going? It's Virginia, right? And you're going to go there when? 25th of November. 25th, and he invited me. I don't know if I'm up to it. I don't know if I'm up to riding in his van. Which I haven't seen yet, by the way. It's I want right to see. I know. I want to see your van. Yeah, it's and and his 88 year old Alzheimer's mother, and going down to this. How many? It's mainly African American, right? Would I be the only white man there, or the other white people there? Huh? Yeah, maybe some white people. There might be one or two. How many are going to be there all together? How many people? Uh, oh, well, how, maybe about 25. 25. And how many will be as white as me? Me, my mother. Um, oh yeah, your mother is as white as me. I, I, I don't want to pull rank on you, but you got a lovely tan complexion, and I'm so white that that I could never pass. You could pass for a Puerto Rican or an Indian. I told him he doesn't even look African American. He could pass as Mid Eastern. Do they mistake you for Spanish and everything else these days, or what? Everything. Right. So you just don't know who people, what they are these days, you know. And imagine being beaten up in a black neighborhood by all these teen, black teenagers because you're too damn white. What a what a nightmare. Well, that's and the, he learned to fight. That's the that's the uh, you know the story. I feel like that's the story of like gay people and trans people. Yep. Is that men hate women. And then everybody hates the people who are in between. But he's heterosexual. He has a wife and two kids. But I'm saying, but I'm saying, it's like it's the same way with everything. You oh, know, you the, mean the people? You know what I mean? Like the the, the, the people who are on top, right? The people who are on the bottom, right? Everybody hates the people who are stuck in between. Right. But he's also he's a great construction. I mean, you flip some houses for a while. Sure, he got houses and he he flipped them and made money. His two sons have turned, his wife raised his sons while he was in jail, but one of them made a lot of money, has a half a million, a million dollar house down in Virginia where they're having the reunion. So you're looking at a man who... The one in Canada has a million dollar house. Wow. Yeah, and he was LeVar, what, he wasn't LeVar's best friend, right? I am getting my people confused. I haven't met him. And does he look like you? Or they all look... They, because your wife is African American, she came over with her kid on your what 43rd anniversary. You're not legally married still, right? Or are you? Oh, you're still legally married. For how many years? This June will be 50. Wow! I'll have to go on and get you a fancy, expensive present. I'm finding out. I'm, I'm going to get myself in deep debt here talking to this guy. <laughs> yeah, Randy and I have been best friends for a long, many years. Oh, that's yeah, because I was a, I negotiated the movie, and he called me up and he said, "How did you get a transcript of John's trial before I did? I had been in the courtroom writing everything down. Oh, wow! And the articles I put in this short-lived publication was part of the basis of him getting the appeal." He appealed John's 20-year sentence. It should have been 12, and the judge said it's already got. He was nodding out, and the lawyer bribed him to plead guilty with money they'd gotten from Warner's Brothers to make the Dog Day Afternoon movie. I showed the footage I shot to Al Pacino. I didn't know who he was. I thought he was a piece of delivery boy. And so they, and all they did was give me $225 and kick me out and tell me, all you want to do is make a movie about two guys having an affair in the village. You know. I mean, I really got screwed over big time, but, yeah. but I went into the antique business. That was when I was a struggling journalist. journalist. I said, to hell with this, I'm going to start making money again. You can't earn your money in art. But you, you, he's a really good artist. He used to paint things in t kitchens, right? I mean, what, what, what kind of artwork did you do? You used to paint flowers on cabinets? and Everything. Right. Everything. Fine right. arts. Right. Pastels. And he does, he does he does help I tell him be a legal way. He is represent he's recognized in court as 
And what do they call it? Because if you know your law and you handle cases, he helps people get their kids back. He can work as a legal aid, and he's recognized. What's it called? You have I'm a lawyer by prescription. Lawyer, lawyer by by prescription. And the judges are the ones that say that you're a lawyer by prescription. Sure. As a matter of fact, one law student at one of the showings of the dog got up and said that his case was so compelling that they spent hours or spent three days or a week or something discussing it in their class, that you're an absolutely brilliant the, lawyer. That was the amount of litigation that I did. Right. Said that it was so much litigation. Right. It took them, I think, three months. Three months. So anyway, so you're meeting a great celebrity and you're a great artist. Oh, thank you. Right? And what do you do? He says that you don't do this for a living. No. But listen, I told you, I told you what I did, didn't I? I mean, I'm going to turn off the thing to tell you what so I have.